Hello everybody, my name is Adam and back to another Planet Zoo video today where we are creating one of my favourite habitats that I've created recently actually. Really happy with it how it came out looking and to start off with, we started with this which is basically the, the main viewing area. This is the glass where our guests will look through to see our exhibit. Exhibit, sorry, habitat enclosure, whatever you want to call it. Carried that theme on along, creating that kind of like a round viewing area. And then it was to move on to the kind of um, the, the hard shelter for the animals as well as the entrance for our zookeepers to get in to the habitat to be able to feed our animals. This habitat is for the raccoon. Now, just a disclaimer, the raccoon can escape this habitat. So play in, fra play, not franchise mode, sorry, play in sandbox mode and turn the setting off, which um, disables um, your animals being able to escape. If you don't know how to do that, wait till the end of the video and I will show you how to do that. Or you can just download this from the Steam Workshop link in the description and pull it apart and see how I've made certain things or do whatever you want with it basically. But I wanted to create something without worrying about the the um, actual game mechanics, something I wanted to just get creative. If you know what I mean, you watch my videos, I just love getting creative. And kind of like a rustic look with this habitat really, kind of like, it's quite a realistic habitat I would say. Um, you don't have to use it for the raccoons, you can use it for other animals and if it's an animal that can't climb then it, it will probably will what escape so you won't have to use those sandbox settings but yeah it's kind of like a, a rustic i wouldn't say it run down but i would say really realistic and authentic and I, you can see me using a lot of the logs um, that's why that's one of the main reasons why the raccoons can climb because a lot of the logs are used around the habitat climbing frames and then this trim, I just wanted to, you can see I just completed the roof, but I wanted a bit of a trim, so I used this wooden piece. I believe this wooden piece is out, out of the Asia pack. And then I used kind of like a more modern wooden piece on top of that. It's all about the little details in Planet Zoo, believe me. And once I've got how the, like, I wanted the supporting beams at the side of the roof looking, it was just a matter of duplicating it over, filling about and trying to get it how I want it to look in my head, basically. Um, no reference images for this build kind of just winged it and just went went with it the only thing i wanted it to look like is is quite realistic and kind of like it's been it's been man built i didn't want it like like on a low budget i didn't want a big fancy modern habitat which i do tend to do quite often i wanted to do something different with this habitat um and yeah twilight pack um i'm loving it so far if you've not seen my bat enclosure i have done one for the bat it's not, it's not an enclosure it's what through exhibit the name in it aren't they um kind of like an avery style building i did for the bats but yeah i'm loving it what are you liking it let me know in the comments section below and if you do want to share anything you create with you create yourself you want to share it with me then on my twitter my instagram and all that good stuff is in the description below also um you can see me just lining up these beams now and to be honest with you i didn't really know how i wanted it to look i kind of just went with it and you can see i end up doing it a lot of adjusting and that's what i suggest doing as well if something just doesn't feel right just go back to it or have a little break break from planet zoo and then go back into the habitat and, and have a little fiddle around and you will get there in the end i promise patience and perseverance is key with planet zoo i say it all the time you probably heard if you're a long time subscriber of mine you're probably sick of me saying that now but yeah i'm, I'm really excited with this um not this build this 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 dlc this this um twilight pack They've gone with a theme this time, and that's Halloween and Autumn. And they don't normally do that. They normally go from for a, like a region around the world and base the animals and the items from that region. But they've not with this. They've gone with a theme, um, Autumn, Autumn, and like Halloween. And I'm really happy they're going down this path. A, a lot of people have given stick by going down this path, but I, it's a nice change for me anyway. Maybe around Christmas time we might get some kind of Christmassy theme. You never know. I'd live to hope. I'd live to hope. You see, we're just finishing off that roof now, and it came out looking like this. So our main viewing area is in. Our main hard shelter is in. You can see, I've just included some mesh gate as well. Again, trying to give it that more realistic look. And then it was time to create this, and I would, I would 
call this kind of like an Avery style um, outhouse, would you call it? I'm not too sure. I'm not, to be honest with you, not too sure. But this is an easy way how to do it. And I was actually watching one of um, Simpler Savannah's videos. So big thanks to Simpler Savannah. She's an amazing content creator. If you don't know who she is, then just YouTube, but you will find her Planet Zoo content. And she used this roof just to align mesh pieces to create like a mini Avery. And I thought, how smart is that? Normally, it takes me ages to get the dimensions right and the length right to be able to, to match up. But if you just followed the dimensions of this roof, it will match up just like the, the, the roof has. And yeah, it works. It really does work. So if you've not tried this, then go and give it a try. And once that was in place and I had those dimensions, all I had to do was line them up, like I said, move the roof up to the top and boom, we've got an Avery with a roof on. Last thing to do is to remove one side panel so our raccoons can actually get in here. And then you can play this, place this on the outside of your habitat or I kind of place it on the in and outside, kind of creating another little barrier. And it came out looking like this once the path was in. Now there was only one thing left to do, is to create a climbing frame and add the foliage. So let's put the climbing frame in now, shall we? And now let's add the foliage. As you can see, foliage really makes this habitat come alive. And now we just need to close that little gap there at the back. And we'll do that with these backdrops what I've created. Again, I've said it before, Steam Workshop link in the description if, if for anything I create. And these backdrops work really well. I added some extra rocks and some extra foliage just to finish off this, this back area and close this gap really. So this is it complete and done and I'm really happy with it as you can see I've added some more foliage definitely added some more leaves if we go over to the left here you'll be able to see I've had some pumpkins as well just wanted to create that autumn feel and that well, bit Halloweeny really isn't it um, but yeah really happy with it so let's get some raccoons in there and see how they behave and see if they like it Right, the skunks are now going in and like I've said, this build is not fit for purpose unless you're playing sandbox, if you're playing franchise mode or you want to play it as realistic as possible. It's not built for purpose because the raccoons, guess what, they can escape. I wanted to do something without worrying about the in-game mechanics. I wanted something visually and, you know, something what looks very attractive and looks good. So, if you don't know how to do it, I'm about to do it now. I'm just going to press escape and I'm going to go into settings. Um, I believe it's under sandbox, animal settings, and we want to disable, where is it, where is it, do, do, do. enable escapes, want to click that, want to click apply, press ok, press resume, and now when we click on our raccoon, it should not be able to escape, so we go into the heat map, you can see it definitely can escape, but it won't escape, now you change this setting, like I said, this is not fit for purpose. This is more visually something what I just wanted to create and get creative with. And to me, it is a realistic um, habitat. It's just because most of the pieces I've used, like these logs, they are climbable logs. And that's why they can escape basically, because obviously raccoons can escape. Obviously, if I was to do the whole build like this Avery style here with mesh, they wouldn't be able to escape. But this is for you sandbox players out there if you do want to download it. And if you do want to download it, then obviously the link to that is the, my workshop. Um, what I'm trying to say, my workshop page is down in the description below, link to it there. So you can download it. But remember, turn off enable escapes on your settings in sandbox mode. And with that being said, my name is Adam. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. And I will catch you in the next Planet Zoo video.